morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Get It Right with Justice. Today we'll be discussing the case post the Supreme Court judgment that pertains to constitutional law as well as administrative law. That is the case of Derek Chitala versus the Attorney General, 1995 to 1997, ZR 91. Derek Chitala versus the Attorney General, 1995 to 1997, ZR 91. Very important case, Supreme Court judgment. So, of course, this case really had started in the, in the High Court. I started in the High Court. The High Court had, of course, um, denied or dismissed the claim. On another account, the uh, appellant was displeased or wasn't happy with the decision of the High Court, so he appealed to the Supreme Court. That was a time we never had in Zambia, that is, the, the, the Court of Appeals. It went direct from the the High Court to the Supreme Court. Well, the salient facts leading up to the beautiful judgment that we have from this case were that um, President Chiluba during that time had uh, commissioned or established a commission, a constitutional review commission, that was known as the Monacato Constitutional Review Commission. This commission obviously was to go out, get reviews from people, find out and make recommendations as to what were to be the changes that were to be made to the, the Zambian constitution at that particular time. Of course, this was well enough from the fact that we, were, we had a constitution that never really spoke to the light of the majority of the Zambian people. So there was need to reform, there was need to change, there was need to add more of uh, the aspects that of course were going to speak so much to the light and the spirit what people really needed. So, because of that and coming meeting after that, the Monacatwe Constitutional Review Commission had gone into the districts, into the streets, into the country, to the countryside, the peripheries of the country of Zambia, and trying to get the views, reviews from people and see on how, how best they would want, of course, the constitution of Zambia to be uh, amended. So soon after the recommendations were done, the Monacatwe Constitutional Review Commission made recommendations to the president, of course, saying that the best approach that was to be used in order to amend the Zambian constitution at the time was the Constituent Assembly and through a referendum. That being the case, however, the president got the review and, of course, um, by virtue of Section 5 of the Inquiries Act, the President is not bound by the recommendations that are made by the Commission. And accordingly, in this case, President Chiluba at that particular time was not bound by that decision. Not only that, he decided not to follow any of the recommendations that were made. Instead, he actually decided to use a different mode as to what was to be used as a way of trying to amend the Zambian constitution. So here, if we really see how everything has really worked up and how everything really became sort of a point of contention, we are appreciating and realizing that initially the commission had made two recommendations as to how the Zambian constitution was to be amended. This one being uh, through constituent assembly and the second one through referendum. However, President Chiluba did not follow that. Instead, he had directed that the constitution of Zambia was to be amended by parliament. And that is how it was. So it was because of that decision that was made that Derek Chitan thought that particular decision that was made by the president instead of following up as to what the recommendations were or had suggested by the commission, he decided to change or to rather take a different approach, saying that the constitution of Zambia should rather be adopted by means of uh, parliament. So he was he had taken that particular step by the president to have been of bad faith as a way of being more individualistic, as a way of the president just trying to enrich himself and as a way of the president trying to have more power. So because of that, he, of course, the 
ball in motion, started rolling, and of course, into the matter in the high court. So when the matter went to the high court, the high court had, had, had dismissed the claim, and of course, he wasn't satisfied with that particular ruling of the high court, so he appealed to the Supreme Court. When the matter went to the Supreme Court, and here it is really important for me to actually be at pains to stress that, it was at this particular moment in time that the court actually took time. The court actually took an opportunity for them to discuss and be able to talk about um, what is really necessary, what is required uh, for a decision that has been made by a public body or by a public officer. It is to be subjected to judicial review. What is it that is, of course, court and needed? So remember, the Richard Allard instituted the matter in court, of course, for judicial review. All that he basically wanted was to try and see if at all the president had obviously conformed to the process needed for him to make the decision that he actually made. So when he went to court, the Supreme Court said that for purposes of um, this is really important. So they said that for purposes of trying to check and be able to see if the administrative decision that was made by a public officer or body, it is important that we carry out, it is important that we carry out, carry out three important tests that are to, that are really to create a measure, uh, to create a standard as to whether the decision that was made by a public body or officer is really in accordance with the procedures set. Where it is determined to say that the procedure that was taken was of course not in accordance with what is required, then accordingly it will mean that the decision that is made obviously will be deemed to have been now in void. So what are the three hurdles then that the court will obviously consider under judicial review? So by the way, judicial review basically uh, is the process that courts of law uses in order for them to determine and be able to check if at all the decision that was made by public body or officer um, is in accordance with the laws that has been conferred on them to make and be able to determine the particular decision. So judicial review looks so much into the process, into the decision-making process are culminating amount of the decision that was made by a public officer. So, of course, the three hurdles that are there that the court has to stretch is that any administrative decision to be subjected to judicial review needs to pass three tests. Number one test is a test of legality. Number two it is a test of irrational or rationality or unreasonableness. And number three it is of course a wailing up from the principle for the process of procedural uh, property and this of course stems from or was actually created by logic so of course i'll take this moment of time for me to express and be able to explain the reasoning of the court and the court trying to come up with a decision at the end so the court accordingly in this case decided that if we are to Ascertained or be able for us to be put in the light it is only important and imperative that we check if the decision that was made by a public officer was legal. If it is so determined that we find the decision that was made by a public officer is not illegal, that means that the herald has been passed. Hence, it will mean that we have to move to the second test. The other test is amount up to rationality or unreasonableness. So unreasonableness checks so much into the light of basically using what is known as an objective test. Was it unreasonable in the circumstances in which this decision was made? Was the decision that was made a Russian would a reasonable person exist or been placed in the presence, in the sight or in the shoes of the public officer? Would they have made the same decision that was made by the public officer? And of course, the last test is a test of procedural appropriate, which basically talks about the failure to observe the basic rules of natural justice. And of course, when we talk about the rules of natural justice, we're talking about, of course, the fundamental rules created by common law. Of course, we're talking about 
once did you follow the correct procedure? If it was deep for the person to be heard, was the person heard? Was the person given the opportunity for them to exculpate themselves? Very, very important. So accordingly, after that court subjected the decision that was made by the president to these three tests, accordingly they came to find that the decision that was made by President Chiluva was in line and it was not illegal, it was not unreasonable. And most importantly, President Chiluba had followed the basic rules that conform to the principle of natural justice. So this case is really important because it opens up and also wells up what is really important in that it exposes uh, what is to be done by the court if they are to subject an administrative decision to make a public office of body to the need to do to judicial review. So for purposes of judicial review, the court will have to consider three tests. If this three tests pass, it will mean that the decision that was made by the public officer accordingly is void. But if it falls to pass, we will find that decision made by a public officer accordingly is not illegal, it is not irrational, and if that followed or conformed to the procedure necessary and needed, then it basically means that that particular decision is valid. And accordingly, the Supreme Court in this particular decision of Derek Chidala, ruling in favor of the decision that was made by the president, who was being represented by the Attorney General, the court ruled or held that the decision that was made by the president as to the process in which the Zambian constitution was to be adopted was altogether valid in that it was not illegal, in that it was not irrational, and in that it had conformed to the process needed in conforming to the principles of natural justice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is get it right, get it <laughs>